Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you something really cool, especially if you are designing and prototyping date related type of prototypes and products. And you know, it could be as simple as here, I have like a really simplified dumbified Jira type of uh, scenario about the team management and resource management. And first and foremost, I want to display the current date and the current time where the user is based which is really simple and really easy to do because Axure has built-in functions and kind of like a variable functionality to capture that data out of the computer uh, information. And the next bit, which is much more complicated, is making a switch for a specific location. So I'm gonna make it, maybe this is a tab, and let's see if I click on New York, the current time and date has to change dependent on that location. You know, the use cases for this is infinite almost because you can then play with a the time there is a lot of different leeway where you can just you know make maybe even like a booking app where you have specific times and everything looks real and lifelike you know there's just so much you can simulate just knowing how to access this type of functionality to get the current time and the current date and then you know take it from there so as usual i'm gonna jump in and set up my scene so let's quicken this thing up and let's explore Boom, and here we set up a scene. As you can see, nothing is functional here, but let me show you how to do quite interesting bit. First and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and just create these tabs so they're a bit more functional. So as usual, you know, dynamic panel, let's give it a name. Let's see if it actually works. Boom, it does work with a little bit of glitch here and there, but again, play with it, make it best you can. Now, every time we click on London, I want to set this current date, which is really easy to do in Axure. Let me show you how. We just need to name these text fields and a bit expand because of uh, different formatting we're gonna get. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a name, let's say current time. This is our text field name. And the last, next one is current date. And by default, it's just gonna be those predefined values we have when we load. We can also select, let's say, on load, on page load, just to set it to the right one. So let's say set text. And we need to select our things, so current time. And now let's go into function right away. This is where a magic happens anyways. And in insert variable or function, you're gonna go down, 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 it follows predefined bits. And we are gonna find date, as you can see, it's all there. This is beautiful. Get hours, and then separate it, let's say. And also get minutes, like so. You can also pick it from the drop down, And then you should be able to select the time. Let's preview this. Let's see if it actually works on page load. Boom, as you can see, it's my current time 1110. I also can even add, let's say a second to it. If I edit the functions and just copy it like so, and just say seconds too. It's all built in in action, it's amazing. Um, and then preview, you're gonna see that I'm also gonna receive the seconds every time the page loads. But this is not relevant because it doesn't update immediately. I would need to create a loop. But as you can see, it displays the current time. And if I reload, boom, the second updated. It's 11 a.m. in London right now, um, which is great. And then I'm, I would want to just update uh, that get seconds. We don't really need it. So that's totally fine. And then I would want to go ahead, just do the same for the date. So we're gonna select current target, which is um, current date and just edit the function to give us a current date. If you're new to this, go to this and select. you can select day, day of week, full year, hours. It really depends how you want to display this. You can just select like a get date as a whole, like so, but you're gonna see that the output is gonna be a bit limited and you might want to pre-format it. You can see 13th is the day of today. That's not really not good enough for us, right? So we would want to edit the function 
and just pre-fill it with all those different bits. So I would go ahead back to the get date. We can, you know, we can get full year if we want to. I'm just going to go ahead and just say get day. So it's going to be 13th, let's say. We can also go ahead and get uh, month. I would want month name. We can have it numerical if you want to, but I'm going to go for name. And I'm also, and as you can see, I'm adding commas. So I just want to separate it a little bit. And I also going to add the year. Uh, so we can have a year, 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 year. Where are you? Full year. And that should do the trick. Next step is for us to define the time zones. And if time zones is a bit trickier because you're gonna have to go ahead and now calculate it a little bit manually. And so every time we click on New York, now we would want to change the time, right, to New York time. So let me show how it's done. I'm gonna select both statements so we can just edit it. Depending on how complex you want your prototype to be, I'm gonna show you how to like do the simplest action to actually update this time. So I'm gonna go to our set text on click on New York and just say, let's say, we know that it's five hours. We are five hours ahead and the minutes are the same. And now let's see preview. You're gonna see exactly what I mean. As you can see on New York, six hour current time is let's say 621. Uh, in London, it's 1121. Let me just delete these two things. We don't mistaken it a little bit. And for Melbourne, it's 10 hours ahead. Add 10 hours to our uh, time frame from London. Again, for your time frame, if you're based, let's say, in Moscow or, you know, Barcelona or I don't know, like, uh, let's say, West Coast, it's going to be totally different. So you might want to calculate it. Again, this is the easiest way to do so. There is more complex. I don't want to go with in there yet. I might cover it in a different state, but so you just know. And I'm just going to go ahead and just paste it in and edit the time frame function and just let's say add another 10 hours or so. And let's update it. Let's see if that works. You're going to see right away that it does work, it's 24 hour clock. I think I should have added the nine instead of 10, just from the GMT one. And so as you can see, we have a switch working, it's 24 hour clock. With a date, it might be a little bit tricky and it really depends where you're based. Some points, the date might switch in Melbourne before it switches in London naturally because of the time zone dependencies. But that is really dirty way. It's kind of like you need to be ingenious of how you approach it. You almost can create maybe a conditional statement asking if let's say a Melbourne time is, you know, 0102, meaning it's early in the morning, then you could switch it and add plus one to the date. And how you would do that really quickly, you just on click for Melbourne, I would add in this set text date, maybe, you know, create another use case um, name it maybe use case two, so we don't get confused, add logic. And here, let's say I would select value, select our time stamp, which is basically now get hours plus nine, and say if it is one off 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, switch day and add plus one, but you need to do it manually per each time set basically. And it's quite a dirty way to do so. I don't think you should go that far if you're prototypes. I think the time switch alone is doing a pretty good job. Long as the dates are more or less clear, it, it shouldn't confuse your users or be too questionable. So this opens, you know, a new way, a new toolkit of opportunities of how you can explore and, and, and kind of make the real data input in your times and dates and, and, you know, make it a bit more consistent and a bit more real and lifelike for our users. As you can see, I can add so many more different bits uh, regarding the date. You can also, you know, whatever you can do in JavaScript, let's say multiply, subtract, append, you can um, add different values to it. You can add context, you can add text. Uh, you can, you know, you can do a lot. And in actual, as you can see, there is a lot of defined. So let's say 
It could be that you need month name or it could be that you need month digit and it's already predefined as a function. You just need to insert it as a text or as a variable and you can use it in your prototypes. So I hope this video was useful. I hope you are going to find a use case to include the real date and time values, especially across different time zones. I hope you found some inspiration and as per usual, give a like, subscribe to his channel, share with your friends and I'll see you next time.